Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this is the Paper Paintings Collage Studio. Today I want to talk to you about a simple technique on the gel plate that can bring you lots of joy and also lots of great collage papers. I'm going to take a single long strand of string and wind it around and print it and then switch it and print it again on top of itself over and over to create a beautiful paper with a lot of different line quality. Now I use my hand painted gel printed papers for collage but I am sure that there are other things you can do with hand painted paper. You could make note cards, you could make place card holders for your table at the holidays. You could print on a large map and make gift wrap. There are really endless possibilities, but for me, I use this tool to make about 90% of my hand painted paper for collage. So let's go check it out. Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about one of the most simple things I love to use on the gel plate and that is some string. This is jute string. It has a slightly fuzzy edge to it. You can see that it's got fuzzy edges, which make great prints. Um, I'm going to be using a series of golden yellow, golden brown colors, fluid acrylics from Golden. I'm going to start from light and work my way to dark with layering. So the first color I'm using is Naples yellow. The next one is raw sienna. The next one is Indian yellow. And the last one is going to be burnt sienna. And I'm using a Hosho pad of rice sketch paper. Um, the um, Resources for all of my supplies are on my Amazon link below. And I am using my gel press gel mono printing plate. So what I'm gonna do first is to give myself one solid print of a light color. So I'm gonna put out that Naples yellow, roll it in a nice thin layer with my squeaky brayer. I'm gonna get a nice thin application. Looks like some of my hair is in there. There we go. And I'm going to take my rice paper and I'm going to use the smooth side down. So I'm putting the smooth side down on the plate and I'm just pulling a solid to begin with. So now I've got a light colored solid. That's where I'm going to start. Now I'm going to go to my next darker color, which is the raw sienna. I'm going to lay that out in another thin layer and I'm going to take my string. I've got about three or four feet of string here and I'm just going to lay it on the plate in sort of a random swirly pattern and then I'm going to take my light colored solid and print. Now the string is got dimension so you are going to have to press with your palm of your hand to get that pressure and to get the string to be really showing up nicely make a good impression so you want to press down in between all the negative spaces make sure you get a good impression of that string and you can check by lifting a corner and seeing if there's paint still on the plate and then you can lay that paper back down and work it again now I've got a nice print of the first layer of string. Now I'm going to do that again and I'm going to go over it with the next darker color. I'm a little concerned though that my Indian yellow is probably not going to show up over this raw sienna so I'm going to skip it and go to burnt sienna because every layer needs to be a little bit darker than the previous. So I'm going to go out with the burnt sienna, brayer it. I got a little bit extra paint on there, a little bit more than I had anticipated. You want a nice thin layer. So I'm going to roll that out and then I'm going to take the string again and spread it randomly and loosely across the plate. And then I'm going to take that previous print and print it again. Now I used a lot of paint, so there's some left over on the plate, but here now I've got two string designs and you can see the pattern of the first one coming through the second one. I'm just going to lift this up and in order to get it clean, I'm gonna take another clean sheet of paper and sort of just lift that extra paint off. That takes off most of the paint and this becomes a base layer for something else. So we'll set that aside and now we're ready to go to a darker color. So, um, 
I'm gonna go to Alizarin Crimson. That is a reddish purpley brown that is darker than what we've got there, let's hope, because we gotta go one more layer. Yep, that looks like that'll be darker. You have to work from light to dark. And that is darker than what we had with the burnt sienna. And now I'm going to put the string on again in another random pattern. And you can continue to do this in layers and layers and layers. If you start light and work very subtly with your shifts, you'll get 10 or 12 layers before you get to dark. We've got uh, just a few here because I went kind of dark kind of fast, but you can experiment with your color combinations and your layering and see how many layers you can get before you run out of room for darker paint. So now I'm going to take that string layer again. And again, I've got a little extra paint on the plate, but now I've got multiple layers, multiple layers of string, and you can see each layer through the next. Now I've gotten really dark, and so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna use that cleanup sheet again. So at the end, like this, I can't go any darker. I can't go any darker than these colors that I've already got. So what I'd like to do is one more layer using an opaque color that will go over dark. It'll make it light and let everything else show through. So I've got a couple options for opaque. I could use my Naples yellow again to go over the top, or I could be totally funky and use my teal because both of these are pretty opaque. You can see that the black tick marks that you can see on the front of the container through the Indian yellow are hardly visible through these two, which indicates that they're more opaque colors. So why don't we go funky with teal and take it right out of the neutral tone family? We'll put that in a thin layer. Keep it thin. This is an opaque color, so it will cover the dark purpley brown that we ended with, the alizarin crimson. So I'm just gonna arrange this string again loosely in sort of a fun curvy pattern. Interesting pattern. And now because this is a rather opaque paint, we can go over the dark color. I didn't anticipate getting so dark so quickly, but uh, experimentation is how you figure things out. So we're gonna go over that with the teal. And there I have a beautiful string pattern that shows the lighter, medium, and darker colors shoot through the opaque teal. So that's fun with string. We could also go over this again with a metallic because gold would look beautiful over this. We could go over it with white. Um, or now that it's a medium tone of the teal, we could do another layer going dark again. So it's really all about experimenting and layering, layering. So now that it's a medium to light, we could go over it with another dark color again, or we could go over it with another opaque color. Experimenting is the key. It's just a great little piece of string and it's making uh, fun patterns and it's simple and it's inexpensive and it will give you hours of entertainment. So there you have it string prints with the gel press gel plate.